meet Timmy, the hackathon tourist. He is networking. Right now he's grabbing free pizza and exchanging business cards he forgot to bring. Timmy's idea of project-based learning, a few group projects where he did the bare minimum. Zero GitHub contributions, zero in-depth understanding, and zero wins. Oh, and he's still asking his dad if he knows anyone at Google who can give him a referral. Meanwhile, meet PyTorch Peter. He's built different. He doesn't just attend hackathons, he dominates them. He doesn't just watch AI videos on YouTube, he reads research papers and implements them. In the time Timmy was perfecting his elevator pitch for the millionth time, Peter built a novel application of the two papers that we're about to discuss, optimizing his model perfectly. And Peter's not just crushing it in AI, he's got startups sliding into his DMs, he has internship offers from every company that Timmy dreams of. The difference? Two AI papers and the courage to go deeper than 99% of students ever will. My name is Dev and while I was in school I interned at Amazon making over $80 an hour and the day I graduated I landed a new grad offer paying over $240,000 a year. I've also taught AI to thousands of students across the world and helped them land their dream internship and job offer. And a key part of that process is reading research papers and implementing them. So without further ado let's get into paper number one. This paper from OpenAI is a game changer. It shows how the model performance depends on more data, more compute, and model size. This paper is part of the reason why huge models like GPT-3 and GPT-4 exist. And here's why this research paper matters. First, it gives you a roadmap for why and how researchers decided to scale up LLMs into the billions and billions of parameters that we have today. Next, it helps you grasp the the future of AI. Labs like OpenAI and Anthropic plan to keep scaling these models as much as possible. Next, if you can understand this paper, explain it in an interview, actually talk about it with an engineer, researcher, or manager, it will signal high-level understanding. And perhaps most importantly, this paper is surprisingly beginner-friendly and not too heavy on the math. All right, the second paper is the GPT-2 paper. Okay, the full title of this paper is Language Models Are Unsupervised Multitask Learners. I know it's a mouthful, but trust me, this one's important. This is the paper that shocked the world and started to change everything in LLMs. This paper showed that when we train bigger and bigger models, but also with semi-supervised learning, you know, you've heard before that ChatGPT was trained on the entire internet. We're just passing the text into the model and letting the model Model, figure out the relationships between the data in the language and suddenly the model learns how to speak. That's what semi-supervised learning is about. Well, this paper showed that when we take that approach, the model is able to handle many different tasks without any task-specific fine-tuning. The model becomes very general purpose and has these emergent abilities. Let me make that a bit more concrete. So before we had LLMs like ChatGPT, NLP or natural language processing researchers would develop tasks task specific models. Let's say we wanted a sentiment analysis model where we pass in a sentence and we get a number between negative one and one where negative one is totally negative emotion in the sentence and one is totally positive emotion in the sentence. We would have to train a model for this specific task. But now with LLMs like ChatGPT, you can just prompt the model, give it a sentence and say, hey, rank the emotion in this sentence between negative one and one and the model will talk back to you and actually perform the task of sentiment analysis or emotion detection, right? We don't have to train task specific models anymore because LLMs are very general purpose and that's what this paper showed. Ultimately, this paper is foundational because it paved the way for GPT-3 and GPT-4, which we all use on a day-to-day -day basis now. If you understand this paper, then you're on your way to understanding how LLMs really work at the lowest level. And best of all, this paper is surprisingly readable. It's not crazy heavy on the math. This paper is also a goldmine of inspiration for more project ideas ideas. You can try to re-implement the original architecture for GPT-2. You can try to fine-tune it on a custom use case like education, healthcare, productivity. The possibilities are endless. You want to read this paper. I want to end this video with a final rant. Don't be a course collector. Don't hoard random Coursera certificates and copy diabetes prediction tutorials from YouTube for the third time. 
That is not the way to stand out. Instead, pick a paper, implement it, share what you learned online, and repeat. This process will put you ahead of 99% of students. You don't need eight months of lead code grinding, you don't need a sweaty suit and tie at the career fair, and you don't have to beg all of your uncles for a referral at the company they work at. What you do need is to read papers, re-implement them, and share your work online. That's how you get those sweet, sweet job offers. And if you want to shortcut this whole process, if you want concise explanations of some of the top research papers in the field, along with full guides for re-implementing them, then I invite you to join LLM Liftoff, our AI engineering accelerator. It's linked in the description, and we've helped thousands of students land their dream internship and job offer. We even have a full money-back guarantee. I've never seen anything like this before. You can learn more at the link in the description. Next, if you're looking for another video to watch, check out my video where I finally answer the age-old debate. Should you grind lead code or build AI projects? The answer might surprise you. So check it out. You don't want to miss it.